But you know, the real story about Truvada and PrEP is why are so few people taking it? We're coming up on three years after the FDA approved it. I know that on the internet there are PrEP groups and you know, there's anecdotal information that it's increasing. People have had an opportunity to hear about it and they're not voting to swallow those pills. The reason it has not been widely implemented is very complicated. One just has to do with lack of information and education. People just don't know about this. The other thing that gets in the way of people accepting PrEP is that we're talking about anal sex. Chock full of nuts. A lot of doctors and nurses are uncomfortable talking about anal sex and pleasure. A lot of gay people are ashamed and embarrassed to talk about the anal region as a source of pleasure and intimacy. I think anything related to sex is going to be controversial. Uh, people have a lot of judgment around other people's sexuality and their sexual practices. I think sex is such a powerful experience that we care about it. Um, I just wish that we could find ways to, to talk about it in less judgmental ways. The most common misconception about the leather community, I believe, is that we're all a bunch of filthy, awkward, kinky people that like hurting each other, <laughs> which is not true. Um, I think that the leather community is probably the most sex-positive community, the most inclusive community, and the most well-educated community that is out there. My company stands very closely behind new advances when it comes to sexual health. Our mission is to alleviate misconceptions and to teach and yes, predominantly in regards to BDSM sex, because it's great. So we're on the infamous fourth floor at kink.com at the San Francisco Armory. Behind you, you see a great closet full of toys that the kinky person will know what all of this is for. And oh God, what is all of this? I'm probably the least kinky person in this building, quite honestly. Well, I've worked in HIV nonprofit as a volunteer for about 10 years between Berlin, London, and the United States. So with that, when PrEP rolled around, I wanted to bring proper education and knowledge to the people, um, letting them know on a level that is easy for them to understand. So I've hosted about 27 PrEP panels between the US, Canada, and Europe in the last six months, really. Who knows how HIV is transmitted? Blood. Blood? Blood's one. What else? Semen. <laughs> <laughs> Just today, 137 people in this country will get HIV. And my question is, what are we really doing today to stop this? Are we really looking at sexual health in schools? Are we really thinking about what is it all that we can do? I think PrEP is a huge, huge mover in this. Because for the first time ever do we have an actual choice that is relevant to how I have sex. Karen, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. Good. I understand you wanna talk about PrEP today. Yes. I have about a, between 115 and 120 people at this point. It's hard to keep track because every day I'm writing more prescriptions. And I haven't seen a single zero conversion, converting from HIV negative to HIV positive. Just for reference, Dr. Howard Grossman here in New York City currently has 115 to 120 patients currently on Truvada without a single sero conversion to date. How do you respond to that? That's great. Yeah, I mean, um, but what's the nature of his clientele? Is it uh, young, uh, poor African Americans and Latinos, or is it you know wealthy professional Upper uh, West Side? Uh, people. Some people have said that uh, PrEP is a affluent white men's drug. Um, I haven't seen that as the case. Now, I'm not saying that it may not be true. Let me go back. PrEP, unfortunately, has made it clear that there are health disparities and health care disparities, disparities in access to good information. And, and sadly, we are seeing that PrEP is rolling out primarily among well-resourced, relatively privileged people. Yeah. 
HIV bears a disproportionate burden on communities of color. As well, our communities, black and brown communities, lack the access that our white counterparts have to health care. Harlem United has a rich history in doing HIV prevention for communities of color. PrEP was sort of a natural and logical extension of that work. You know, PrEP is more than just the pill. PrEP involves the cost of care and resources involved in getting care to folks. So it's the lab work, the testing, and the cost of visits has to be sort of accounted for when you're trying to make PrEP accessible to people. What we know is that we have the tools. Uh, I mean, we have condoms, we have education, now we have PrEP, and that is not to say that everybody is gonna be on PrEP. Certainly, PrEP is not for everyone. But what I wanna convey is that it's an option for everyone. I have a few questions that I laid out. The first one is, given the recommendations put forth by New York State's Ending the Epidemic Task Force, where I am a member representing Harlem United of Governor Cuomo's Ending the Epidemic Task Force. He wanted to initiate a plan to end AIDS by 2020, and he wanted that plan to be framed in three main pillars. One, make sure all New Yorkers are tested for HIV and know their status. Two, anybody who's HIV positive can be linked and retained in care. And three, facilitate access to PrEP. On paper, it looks wonderful. But we all know that when you roll things out, they don't go as expected. So a lot of what I'll be doing is trying to listen to the community and figure out who is falling through the cracks and who are we still not reaching. Nos toca una noche larga hoy. Mi nombre es Lorena Borjas. Yo soy de mexicana, eh, hispana, latina. Me identifico como una mujer transgénero. Yo hago communities alcances, pero en sí yo estoy enfocada en la comunidad trans. A estos servicios muchas de las chicas que yo alcanzo no saben que ese medicamento existe. Entonces como que existe la barrera de ellos poder acceder. Esto va a quedar grabado para para siempre. Sí, está preciosa la foto. La verdad que no es una tarea fácil ser mujer transgénero, ser emigrante y no saber el idioma inglés. Es un problema muy difícil. En muchas de las clínicas no tienen traductores, no tienen cómo atender al paciente que habla español. Pero entonces hoy lunes lo que hacemos es anunciar el programa inscribir personas nuevas para que vengan a la clínica y de una u otra forma hacerle llegar el mensaje. Algunas personas saben del medicamento, pero todavía no les ha llegado la información. So como que debemos de promocionar, llevar más información a las personas.